Okay, here we go. Uh, we're going to start, this is a, I filmed twice in a row, by the way. Uh, so what we're doing here on this film is we're going to cover, because it helps me get my ideas down, uh, to go over them twice. What we're going to be doing uh, is we're, we're going to formulate the third, what we will call the third law of physics. Now, in the third law of physics, although there are many people who say Newton has three laws of physics, well, he doesn't have three laws of physics, of course. He only has two that you could, you could, you could say are laws. So, if we give him this, we're, okay, we could call this the fourth law of physics. But this is uh, this is third or fourth leg of the explanation for how our universe works, and uh, it's pretty simple. <laughs> pretty simple, uh, and have to be, you know, simple things. We know from experience in engineering that the simple things work, and complex things, they degrade. Uh, they get too complex. Our universe is complex, and then look how it ro rolls. Human life is complex. Anyway, let's go back to the simplicity factor. Okay, uh, and it started here at the farm, my, my farm, by the way. A little picture of my farmhouse there in the pond. It's not Walden Pond, but uh, <laughs> it's my my little slice of uh, heaven. Okay, what we're going to say here, we're going to base this uh, the fundamentals here on, and they're pretty simple. Is that um, you notice if you spin a top, you take a top and you spin a kid's top, you know, spin it any way you want with your hand, a, twir a twirler, but if you spin that top and you touch it, just go ahead and touch that top, uh, it's going to move to the right. We call that precession. That's gyroscopic precession. And as humans, we use it for all kinds of stuff in aviation, you know, instruments, and all kinds of instruments. Anyway, and now we can do it electronically. We can actually do precession measurement of 90-degree uh, movement. Uh, we do this electronically now. But... Uh, if you notice, and you visualize yourself standing, say, on the table, you're spinning your top, and say you're about the same size as the top, and you put your arm out and you touch that top, you know it's going to move to the right. Okay. Well, say it moves to the right, and you touch it again, and it'll move to the right again. Well, if you don't change your center of energy that's being applied to that top, it, it, you're going to be like a hub to that top, and that top is literally going to describe a circle around you. Okay. And that's pretty simple. That's the use of precession to draw a circle. Okay. Now this circle, if, if we view these, uh, these events, and we're just, we're just saying a spinning top now. We're not talking about, you know, don't, don't extrapolate and jump all over me now and say that uh, we're going to take this and it's going to be ridiculous because it's not. Just give me a give me a little time here to explain myself. Now, th this is a fundamental principle of mass, and we're going to do that just like one forest, or one tree is a fundamental item of a ma of a forest. This this one atom spinning or this particle spin is going to be the foundation of the events we're going to describe. Right? Okay. Sun's getting hot. Whoo! Sun feels good. Okay. Uh, so what happens? See down there what the time is there. I'm getting short there about five minutes. Okay. Um, if you do that, you're going to describe, the top is going to describe a circle around you. So right now we know a fundamental basis of, what we're, of, of one of the events that takes place. If you were in space, it wouldn't matter. You could be doing this top experiment up there if you want to you know, use NASA to do it, spin a top in space and start playing with it. You're going to see that it will always move in a 90 degree, degree uh, direction of applied force. Well, my goodness, what if an atom did that? And we believe it would. <laughs> we think it operates under, the, we hope it operates under the same principle. And if it did that, it means in the application of force to anything that is spinning, and this is forms under Newtonian law, that you're going to get this item describing a plane of rotation around you, or a plane of rotation around the center of the application of force. Uh, if that's the case, we have a fundamental idea and a concept to grasp on here, something to start with that tells us that in this complex universe of ours, 
in this event that we see going before our eyes, that right before our eyes, right here at this pond, right here with us, is that we have a, a simple thing in nature that's taking place, and we can't get around it. And that is any mass, or all mass, in this universe, its particles are spinning at an outrageous speed. Probably something a little less than the speed of light, because, but it ain't going to be much less than the speed of light. It's going to be a pretty good spin. <laughs> I mean, these are little creatures, little things, little bugs we're talking about, and they're spinning in the near speed of light. And you can imagine, if you can imagine that, then I think you can give me this, is that if we put all that spinning mass together, that what we're looking for now is the application of a derived axis within all these spinning tops. Because the application, or the formulation of that event we can see, the sun has an axis of plane, the earth has an axis of plane, uh, all of these, these items have an axis of plane. Therefore, we know that they're made up of particles with axis of rotational plane. So what we're looking at here, as we think about this, is that we now have a fundamental hook into the meat of this argument. Why does the moon not fall to the earth? Newton knew from Galileo's formulation of inverse square with him rolling bowling balls down planks that that inverse square destroyed his concepts uh, that his math calculus could calculate the fall of the moon to the earth he knew that the earth with just simple math would have fallen to the earth a long time ago kind of like the deal about doubling up your rice grains on the checkerboard <laughs> every time you move another square on the checkerboard be a lot of rice well inverse square tells us that is that the moon there were no set of numbers that he could have come up with that could have explained the proximity of the moon and therefore he like everyone else has come to the conclusion the moon's not going to fall on us okay now that's our fundamentals. We're go we are going to talk about spin, so people who are getting ready to sling arrows and mud at me for uh, making this a simple thing, just give me a little time, and uh, we're going to explain this thing. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.